Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. I'm going to narrate the painting of a peony, speed it up to eight times as fast as it went. Let's get started. I'm a little bit in the fog of war because I just finished this painting. I've been struggling with painting in general, just whether I want to do it or how I want to approach it. So I thought what I would do is stay in the rhythm of posting and painting because that might help me stay in the flow. The first thing that I'm doing here, you can see on the left-hand side, I have my lights, my mediums, and my darks mapped out in columns, and I'm gonna be adding value dabs to them and using the red plexiglass value finder in order to determine their, their relative value to each other. I'm not matching the colors to the picture, but I am matching value. I've put in some Naples yellow because that's going to be the one place where I want to leave the whites of my paper white. You know, that's my sign off. Keep the whites of your paper white and your paint's wet. Because I don't generally use any kind of masking fluid because I find it quite clumsy and when you lift it up, it looks like there was a, a scar. So I want to keep things flowing. I want to use as few strokes as possible. I want to have lost and found edges. I want a certain amount of ambiguity and also a certain amount of realness, a certain amount of, oh, there's something there, there. The other thing that I'm doing this year is pulling back from the peony. Most years I do the peony blossom itself. And what I wanted to do this year is to pull back, be further away, and to anchor my compositions in with something that's concrete. Now, I do think that the transparent glass that the peony is in is not concrete enough because glass only exists clear glass anyway, only exists because of the colors that you see through it. There actually is no there there in, in a piece of colored glass. And so that's not anchored in enough. So I grab some cherries and place them down because those, will, those are definitely concrete objects. They are also probably the darkest thing in this painting. What I'm also really aware of is that I want saturation. Some places I want saturation, some places I don't. The peony is a white peony, so I don't want a lot of saturation there. I want to use neutrals and I want to use my usual triad of primary colors in order to create grays without mixing grays, but let the grays mix themselves on the paper. And that's what the three primary co colors do. By having a blue, a red, and a yellow, when I combine them together, they should create gray tones in general, but not specific grays because the peony is not gray. There's a lot of, I don't know what you would call it. I guess it's somewhat like clouds. You know, clouds are not white, but they're perceived as white. And I think the peonies are perceived as white, but they're really not, but they're definitely not gray. So I want to keep color going throughout the peony. And saturation is not the same as value. You know, value is lights and darks. How light or dark is something compared to something else? Saturation has to do with how bright or dull something is. And I wanted to have some places where, you know, my, my whole thing is to want to have contrasts so that I want bright and dull. I want lost and found edges. I want a contrast between my value range of lights and darks. If I can hit all three of those things, those sort of categories, then uh, I'm in a happy place. I'm not sure I did it. You know, this is one of those things for me and I've talked to other painters that this is the case that I, I probably won't even know until tomorrow because the painting that I intended to do is still in my head. The painting that I did is concrete and in front of me, but I'm not able to separate yet which is which. There I am uh, adding brightness, meaning saturation. It's not going to change the value, but I changed the brightness of that yellow. Now the reason for choosing yellow there is because the white does appear in the photograph but there's, there would be too much white, so I needed to make a color, what I call a color value swap out. Well, what would be good color value swap out? And I thought, well, yellow would be good. It'd be good for saturation, and it'll be good against the violets because they're contrasting uh, colors, what do you call, I mean, complementary colors. I went away and came back and felt that I didn't have the saturation that I wanted in this painting. So I went back over the yellow with a more bright yellow and also darkened some spots. Now, I didn't change any of the value decisions that I made at the very beginning, but what I did change was how intense or how bright the colors were. And that was what the paint, what I needed in order for the peony to read a little bit whiter than it had before. And I will make an, a video soon about saturation and brightness, because brightness and dullness are sometimes confused with value or lightness and darkness. 
and there's a definite difference. And in any painting, just like I want to have a value range of lights and darks, I also want to have differences in brightness. I want to have some dull areas and also some bright areas. So that's where we are for right now. Remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.